Court to Court, your connection to what's happening in the federal courts around the country, providing information and ideas to enhance your job and how the courts function. Welcome to Court to Court, the Federal Judicial Center's educational magazine program for all court employees. On this edition, we take an extended look at how one court partners with other organizations to help pro se litigants. From home renovations to growing our own food, it seems that more and more we live in a do-it-yourself culture. It's true in the courts, too. The number of non-prisoner individuals who file on their own in federal court has grown 13 percent in the past three years. Of course, it's not only our DIY culture. It's expensive to hire attorneys, and in these difficult economic times, fewer people have the needed resources. And there's the stress that growing numbers of pro se filings place on chambers and clerk's offices alike. These problems add difficulty to the judiciary's mission to provide equal access to justice for everyone. As courts look for ways to deal with this issue, the Central District of California offers an example of partnering with organizations outside the court. Hi, uh, good morning. Hi, good morning. I'd like to file a case here, please. Hey, you're trying to file a new civil case? I think so. As clerks, we're not allowed to provide legal advice, and unfortunately, it kind of, you know, the conversations tend to move in that direction. And can you ask him, uh, answer a question for me? I, I'm not sure if I'm in the right court. I don't know if this is better. This is the federal court, right? This is the federal court. How can I determine if this is a state matter or a federal court matter? Unfortunately, I cannot answer that question because we're not allowed to provide legal advice here in the clerk's office. And if we couldn't answer all their questions, we would just tell them, you know, you need to consult the rule books. But we didn't really have a good place to send the, uh, the customers. They are reaching out for any assistance you can give them and I can't really tell them how to do something. So it takes a long time, technically, to explain to them, basically answer their question with a non-answer. But since early 2009, a unique collaboration has made possible a separate pro se clinic in the courthouse. How will I know if my um, action is better here or at the state court level? I cannot answer that question because we're not allowed to provide legal advice here in the clerk's office. But what I can do is refer you upstairs to our pro se clinic. Pro se? Yeah, pro se is for people who are representing themselves without attorneys. So what you can do is go upstairs. They are attorneys. They cannot represent you, but they can help you with your case. So let me give you their pamphlet. They're located on the fifth floor, room 525. Okay, are they here today? Yes, they are. We were able to work successfully together with the bench, led by Judge Howard Matz, together with the Prescott Rose Law Firm, which really got the ball rolling when they donated a substantial award that they had received as a result of representing a pro se litigant out of this court. Initially filed pro se by a prisoner, that case was Johnson versus California. The Supreme Court ultimately ruled in favor of the prisoner and the district court awarded $500,000 attorney's fees to the Proskauer Rose Law Firm, which had taken up Mr. Johnson's case. And we worked to get those fees uh, contributed to a potential clinic, as long as other people uh, matched the contributions and could provide additional support. We were looking for a long time for an opportunity to not just deliver pro bono services, but to plant a seed, so to speak. And that's where I came into the picture. At that point, I was heading the pro bono committee, which went about the difficult task of finding lawyers to represent prisoner inmates who were representing themselves, who had no lawyer, in pursuing civil rights claims. And we began to explore, with the assistance of public counsel, how we could create an ongoing mechanism that would involve the private bar, uh, but provide services not just to prisoner inmates, who are seldom seen in the courthouse, but to all litigants in the civil arena who lack lawyers. Public counsel is the nation's largest pro bono law firm. Public counsel has a number of projects for educational rights, consumer law, appellate law, and the Federal Pro Se Clinic is one of those projects. I told her my concern was that we find a law firm that actually genuinely wants to be co-counsel. In addition to Lewis, public counsel provides another attorney the Proskauer Law Fellow, and a paralegal. On any given day, there may be two or three volunteers as well. 
law students or practicing attorneys. Mr. Dorsey, please come in. The attorney will see you now. Great, thank you. Right this way. Be the first window on the left. Thank you. We provide both procedural guidance and legal advice for every aspect of federal court trial practice. So are they saying that my complaint was not clear? That's part of it. That's part of what they are saying. They're saying that, in, uh, that you did not plead your complaint properly, that you did not provide a specificity, or you did not allege your facts properly. They'll get involved in discovery. They'll get involved in motion practice. Um, they'll get involved in pre-trial filings and they'll get involved in trial itself and at each stage we've developed a series of forms and guides as well as the advice that we can give people at the clinic to help them with each stage of the proceeding that they're going through. Fifteen percent of the clinic's clients are defendants who have no choice but to respond in federal court. When Alain Yudi was sued, she consulted several private attorneys but eventually found her way to the pro se clinic in the courthouse. But for the first time I had a true guide, uh, I had some real support, um, I had a real education, and I had people that were constantly patient with me because I would do things badly, bring it back, they'd say, no, correct this, blah, blah, blah. So, it, so it really they guided me through the whole process and I was very lucky. I felt very lucky. You know, it's about caring and it's, a, it's about process. And I've seen the pain of the, people who are trying to represent themselves and don't know what to do, want to be respectful, but are angry, think that an advocate has to be flamboyant and argumentative, don't understand what the judge is trying to do to help them, to tell them what to do. If somebody um, is filing papers, and this happens all the time, that are way out of line, that are uh, either late or improper for a number of reasons that a lawyer would perceive but a non-lawyer would have no reason to really understand much less comply with the clinic is able to nip that in the bud and so of those litigants that we suggest or strongly advise that they either not continue with their case or they not continue with a particular course of action 85 percent of those litigants listen to our advice and stop what they're doing in addition, the fact that somebody who will be before you without a lawyer, but will have the benefit that guidance and communications and forms and directions provide upstairs at the clinic is a terrific resource for the judge. The Pro Se Clinic is the clerk's office best friend. They have saved us a ton of time, a ton of grief, and have really provided a great public service. The Pro Se Clinic assists me in my work in understanding what the pro se um, is trying to ask the judge for. The clinic is really a big time saver for, for myself and the other clerks, um, as well as, you know, a little bit of a, a morale booster. You know, the, the customers are able to receive help, and, you know, that typically, you know, puts them in a little better mood, and, you know, they're easier to work with. I don't get what I used to get where I would be a psychiatrist or what not to a pro se litigant or, you know, depending on what mood they're in um, or try to explain things, I can actually refer them to the website as well, which has a lot of information. The website is a joint effort of the clinic staff, the court's judges, and the clerk's office, which prepared the site. One other thing that we did with regard to the website is that our staff interpreter volunteered to translate all of the items on the website into Spanish as a result of people going to the website, finding out about the clinic, or going to intake, and then going up to see our pro se clinic. We've had a huge decrease in the number of phone calls to the clerk's office, and the length of time they're on the phone to the clerk's office has gone down. And this is basically giving your legal arguments about why your case should not be dismissed. And I think it's very important to look at the motion to dismiss and look at each argument and attack each of the arguments that they make. The walk-in clinic is open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on a first-come, first-served basis. On average, 15 individuals are seen each day, and the staff spend about a half hour with each person. Of course, sometimes we're phenomenally busy, and we've only seen eight people because each one of those eight people has very technical and very confusing and complex issues. 
Other times we can see 16 to 18 people, we don't feel like we're very busy because they have very quick legal questions that they're asking and they just want to form or they just want to do, want us to look over a motion that they've already drafted and we've reviewed a couple of times and we just have to give it a glance over and then tell them that it's okay to file. You can spend five minutes with someone, we'll spend a day with somebody. You can't just walk into a court and say, Your Honor, I really believe I haven't broken the law and these are the reasons why. It's not just about justice, it's about understanding the law, the parameters of the law, how the law works, and the pro se clinic is there to guide you and support you through that system. This is the argument section of the motion to dismiss. You'll want to separate each of your uh, arguments um, into subsections. And uh, you're going to want to do a little bit of legal research. You're going to read their arguments that they make, research the cases they cite, um, look at the statutes they cite, and be able to support your own opposition arguments with your own legal research and your own facts. One of the significant outcomes that we've measured is how successful our pro se litigants are in getting their pleadings drafted in a way so that they are accepted for filing and they actually make it in front of a judge so that a judge can read their legal arguments and then enter a ruling based on those arguments. After several failed attempts by defendant Udi to settle the case against her, clinic staff drafted her motion for summary judgment. Immediately after she served the motion, opposing counsel offered to settle the case. My immediate reaction was relief. <laughs> I was so relieved. It took me a while to get elated, but I was elated finally, you know, um, because it was a tremendous victory. Uh, I could never, I could never have done this on my own. Having a walk-in clinic means that these people who are adrift and angry very often and fearful always, are able to talk with a human being who can provide support or at least guidance and treat them with a sense Thank of you. dignity and respect Someone which they okay, often thanks. seldom encounter. That makes them more receptive to the principles, the rules, the filing requirements, the technicalities because they've been given a chance to be heard and to be considered. So having a human touch is really what is very unique about our clinic. And you can also simply uh, send it by first class mail. Now do I have to file all these documents at the same time? Yes you do. You do. You want to do that all at the same time. And you're going to want to also uh, prepare two extra copies for civil intake because they request the original plus two copies. These people are so patient and open-minded when you walk in the door, they're not making you wrong. They're actually looking for ways where you might be right so that they can help you. I greatly benefit from the satisfaction of knowing that a serious effort to deal with the explosion of pro se litigants and the problems they pre pre present to a smooth and an honest system of justice is being undertaken and we're part of it. The Pro Se Clinic at the Central District of California's Western Division in Los Angeles has proven its usefulness for judges, court staff, and of course the litigants. Even opposing counsel appreciate the help provided to those who represent themselves. Like all efforts with good results, these results didn't just happen. Everyone involved with the clinic has worked hard and patiently to make it a success. In the second half of our report, we'll hear how the three separate organizations went about making the clinic a reality. For several years, District Judge Howard Matz had wanted to set up a program inside the courthouse that would provide help to pro se litigants and of course without the court becoming their lawyer. And we had to do it without the expenditure of any uh, federal public money. That involved a number of negotiations uh, among the collaborators to this project, the approval of the administrative office of the court, and that has involved uh, from even before the clinic first opened its doors, uh, an ongoing dialogue and, meet and communications uh, often reflected in impromptu meetings and in scheduled meetings. In a project like this, there's no road map, and you can't look to what was done in the past for any direct historical reference. But a court can look to existing relationships. And if a court is trying to build a pro se clinic, the relationships that that court already has and mining those 
would be a good way to start thinking of how to develop the services necessary for a pro se, pro se clinic. The Proskauer Rose Law Firm had been part of the federal court's pro bono civil rights panel. Proskauer also had a long-standing relationship with public counsel, which in turn has worked with bar associations and communities in Los Angeles and the state and federal courts. And yet, it takes a lot of support from anyone who's available, the public interest law firms, the, the judiciary and all, to show that they care about it. It is a struggle against uh, inertia and a struggle against a lot of competing uses of the money, a lot of very uh, worthy causes. Funding is a pitfall. Leadership is a central pitfall. Any uh, court, any judge, any court executive wishing to set up something akin to our clinic would have to make sure that there is a committed, genuine, dedicated, and long-term perspective that the representatives of the private bar or these public interest law firms would maintain. The secret is having people be interested in helping people and in helping open the doors of the federal court to pro se litigation. Well, someone has to take the lead and bring everyone along cooperatively, uh, openly, and face the problems directly. What is necessary for an effective collaboration is just that, to collaborate in a direct, candid, uh, and constructive manner with all the other components of a pro se system. At the beginning especially, and I took it upon myself to try to work very hard to assure this, had to educate the other judges, and still do sometimes, especially as new judges come on board, about the services of the clinic, and the limitations of the clinic and what the judges and their respective staffs can do to help the clinic help us. Ever since we've started the clinic, the judges have been very open about talking with the staff at Public Council about problems that we see or ways that we think that the court is impeding access to justice. And they're very open to discussing that mm. and to thinking about changing the local rules or changing the way procedures are done and that involves the, the clerks as well, the clerk's office. The clerk's office is the one that's in contact all the time with the judges. The clerk works with members of the public, meets with the bar associations, meets with uh, legal aid and sort of coordinates all the pieces that need to be put into place. We could not have opened the clinic and started running the clinic and continue to run the clinic without the support of the clerk. We just couldn't. We had to set up our infrastructure, including our phone system, our computer system, our access to the PACER docketing system, our relationship with the marshals and with the court security um, officers, um, our security system at the clinic. Training for the pro se clinic staff has become necessary. We now include them in all the training for the staff on dealing with difficult customers and we've also included them in all of our security awareness programs and security response efforts. And beyond the facilities, it was the clerk staff in civil intake who helped us to understand how pro se litigants normally proceed through the process. The main support that the clerk's office can provide is administrative and organizational assistance to the clinic and the other parties that are involved in, in starting up the program. I think the relationship with the clerk's office works for the same reason the, that the relationship with our judges work. I think it's because everybody is really interested in helping people. And they're really interested in helping pro se litigants um, bring their cases in federal court and be heard. The more uh, information that the leadership of the clinic disseminates to the judges, the more receptive the judges will be to directing their clerks, their law clerks, and their own attention to the ways in which they can avail themselves of the assistance of the clinic. I would say one of the keys of the success of that collaboration is flexibility. As the clinic has grown, as it has developed, as it has matured, we've changed our intake processes and our procedures. We've tried different things and the clerk's office has tried different things and working together and having the flexibility so that we can adapt to one another has been essential for us to be able to serve the public. The bottom line is you can't just allow the clinic to be created and hope it works. It won't work unless the court itself 
through some judges who take on a leadership role, the other judges who cooperate in referring potential litigants to the clinic, and the clerk's office work with the clinic. But to those clerks that have reservations about helping self-represented litigants, pro se clinics are your answer. If you have a clinic, you can refer those people to the pro se clinic, and they will take care of it for you. Those responsible for the Pro Se Clinic in Los Angeles agree that there's no single model of how services could be organized or staffed. In addition to its own staff, Public Council gets volunteers from law schools and the private bar. There are enormous numbers of people out there who want to get involved, but people need somewhere to show up. They need someone to say, here's an opportunity. So some of those law firms have made a commitment and a relationship with our clinic so that they provide a certain number of volunteer attorney hours per month at our clinic. Beyond organization, funding is the single biggest issue to address, both to start and maintain pro se services provided by organizations outside the court. It requires looking for a huge and sometimes not so huge but recurring support benefactors from the law firms and the lawyers who are willing to provide seed money or renewal money as the Proskauer firm has done in our clinic. Proskauer Rose gave the initial attorney's fees award to start the clinic and continues to partially fund its operation by public counsel. But others are encouraged to participate. The key to this sort of a project working in the second phase is for other firms to realize they have a stake in it. So there's no Proskauer um, possessiveness about it. I would love to step back and have our firm in the background and have two or three new firms step up, do this for a year or two, and then move on for another firm. Using attorney admission fees, the district court also provides funds to public counsel for operation of the Los Angeles Clinic and for pro se services in two other divisions and at the bankruptcy court. Of course, courts cannot use appropriated funds and must be extremely cautious about providing non-appropriated funds for anything that isn't the court's mission. A future report in this series will examine how one court makes available funds from its attorney admission fees to an outside organization which provides pro se services. In the Central District of California, the leaders acknowledge that the district size is a factor in how they respond to issues that almost all courts face. What we've done here in Los Angeles, in the Central District of California, is not the only way to deal with this explosion of pro se litigation. It may not necessarily be the best way. It is a promising start and then some. The pro se clinic has been one of the most meaningful projects that this court has ever undertaken. It has rallied the morale and struck to the true values of the bench, the clerk's office, the bar, and others who are interested in public service. That's fantastic. It is fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted them to do. It is. And I think the Pro Se Clinic has made our clerk's office employees better employees because it has just brought out the values to them and in them of public service and customer service. You will need the complaint, which you have here, and there's a notice of interested parties here, and then lastly, the civil cover sheet here. So just make sure you fill out all of this paperwork and then bring it back to one of these windows and we'll assist you when you're ready. I was lucky to be guided through that to a good, good ending. But if I had lost, I felt that the Pro Se Clinic would have helped me uh, lose fairly. And that is also really important. You get a thrill. You get a, you might say, intellectual or psychological um, benefit just from knowing that your court, your staff, your life on a sometimes daily basis is part of a, a way to deal with what has now become a huge national problem about unrepresented litigants in court. If you'd like more information about the Pro Se Clinics in California's Central District, please contact either District Court Judge Howard Matz or Clerk of Court Terry Nafisi. They would be pleased to talk with you. Our next program will feature a court that's partnered with the local Federal Bar Association, which hires attorneys who provide Pro Se services. The court gives funds from its attorney admission fees to the association. 
We'll explore how the court's done that and the cautions necessary. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Court to Court, and if you have ideas for future programs, please let us know. You can email me at the address on the screen. Please check FJC online for information about this and other streaming video programs. Thank you for watching today. Thank you.